Hey, welcome back to episode two in your Android development series. I wanted to share with you guys some basic concepts of app development. So we're gonna try and kind of zoom out a little bit and look at the big picture. So we start with what we said earlier, if I can find it, Android. This is one specific device. But oftentimes as a developer, you'll want to create an application for numerous two, Android and Apple. So in this situation, how can you do this if Java, the language we're using, only develops applications for this? Well, here's a couple of options. Let's draw some stuff out. So we have Android. And for us, we're going to be using Java. You can also use Kotlin. So these are your options for Android, but we're gonna stick with Java. And then we also have Apple, or I guess let's just say iOS. It's probably the better use. And for this, we could use Swift. You can also use Objective-C, but Swift is probably what's recommended. All right, so when we are learning Java and developing Android apps, we're really only covering like 50% of the picture. Even though Android is the more popular operating system, oftentimes companies will want to get their applications on iOS, even so more than Android sometimes. So you have to basically adapt to be able to create apps for both. So here's how you can do that best. One, you, you can learn Java, learn the principles of app development, and then do that again for Swift. And when you're doing this, you can, you can follow different design patterns that if you're creating an application that you want to be on both Android devices and iPhone devices or Apple devices, then you can design it in such a way that you can share certain components. Now this doesn't always work, but it, it can. So for example, instead of having two completely separate applications, you could have two smaller applications that share one backend that feeds both of these applications. That's one way you can do it. So for example, if you're using an application, you know, like let's say you go, you go on Instagram, this might be Instagram's servers. And then you just kind of have like a viewer on Android and a viewer on iOS. So you can basically only code a little bit for Android and a little bit for iOS and then code the, the stuff that's common between the two in, in some other language or, or whatever it might be. So for example, you could do this in Node.js or you could do it in Java or whatever you decide. That doesn't really matter because there's a separation here. You can think of it as two different components. Separation of concerns is what that's called. a long word so basically if you implement things to allow for separation of concerns you can develop the Android application in isolation and you can develop the back end in isolation and then all you got to do is communicate between the two same for the iOS app you can develop that as its own thing and communicate to that back end so that is one way of doing it and now I need to get my eraser I'm trying to reduce my editing because I find that I hate editing and it, it makes me want to not make videos. So if I stop editing, then I make more videos. Everyone's happy. Another option is to use a tool that allows to develop one code base that will then transpile to, to be native apps. So for example, a, a, an option is Flutter. Another option is React Native. And what these will do, this will allow you to code one thing, and then this gets deployed to iOS and Android. So we'll, we'll say Android's on this side. We'll go to Android and iOS. So in, this, in the example of Flutter, you can use the Dart programming language 
In the example of React Native, you can use JavaScript using React. So if you want to develop your application in JavaScript and then just have it magically work on Android and magically work on iOS without having to know Swift or Java, that is how you can do that. Same thing for Flutter. You can code one code base. Another popular one is Xamarin if you know C Sharp. So the thing that's special about these is that the end result is a native application. When someone says native, what they mean is that it's not like a web app that looks like an application, but it's really not. It's native, it is as if you programmed it directly on Android and directly on iOS. So there's no issues for speed or anything like that. Now a third option, so if you're not gonna do Java and Swift and you're not gonna do this, a third option is to do a web app. So with a web app, you can build a website that looks and performs just like an, an app. So you can use it on your mobile devices, just the same by going in the browser, visiting that web page, and it works fine. Or you could even create a shortcut to that website on the, the phone's homepage. So, sorry, I don't know how to use these. <laughs> so you can, you can make a, a shortcut button on here that when you click it, it opens up to that, that web app and it works just fine. So that's a third option. And there are some other options out there, um, like reactive applications. This is another thing you can look into. There's all kinds of different application options and there, there's so many different ways to do it. So what am I trying to get at? Seven minutes into this rambling session, I hope you have just a better view of the different options that are available to us. Which one should you choose? I think it doesn't matter unless your boss tells you to do this one. <laughs> I think the best idea is to just pick one, start with it, and get better at it. Because, for example, once we learn how to do Java and Android, picking up the other ones is going to be a whole lot easier because we're already going to understand the, the different components of the Android applications, and that's going to be very similar if you switch to something like Flutter or React Native. You're going to still have to worry about those components. They might just have little different names, a little different way of working with them, but your overall app development skills are going to be a lot better. So that's where we're starting. I, I have grown to prefer just doing it natively. I, I personally feel like there's a little bit less risk. Um, now, a lot of people have developed with tools such as Xamarin and, and uh, React Native, and it works fine. But I think there, there is a little bit more risk because now you're rel relying on a system that is external to Apple or Android, and you have to abide by what they allow, uh, which means maybe you don't get the, the latest, greatest features that are available on, on new operating system releases. Or maybe there's, there's some bugs in their software that makes it hard to create a certain app. So there's different issues that arise, and although it's perfect to, it's, it's ideal to think in a perfect world, you know, we create one code base and it magically just works on Android and iOS, but that's not always reality. You can have issues that, that arise that might not arise if you're developing natively on iOS or Android. So that's why I think personally, it's probably best to just start developing natively yourself on a mobile device, in this case Android, using Java or Kotlin, and if you're on iOS, using Swift. So that's where we're starting. Hopefully that makes sense with you guys, and um, if you have any questions or concerns about which direction you should go, I would like to start some discussion in the comments section of this video. Let's hear what experience you've had with these different ways of creating applications, and which ones have worked best for you, or which ones you would advise against because different people are going to have different experiences and some people are going to love a tool such as React Native and other people are going to absolutely hate it. So let's hear some of your stories if you've done any app development in, in, in the past or as you're going through this series, maybe you try one and it's not what you're hoping for, <laughs> then, then come back to this video and leave a comment in that comment section below. And the only other request I have is to subscribe to help this channel. Um, you know, I gotta be that number one 
coding channel. So I got, got a quite a bit of a ways to go. And also consider supporting me on Patreon. And thank you. Peace out.